alternative dig talk real issues real talk fellow citizens following the sequence of events uganda seems to be at political crossroads <laughs> I'm not a servant of anybody. Madam, I know the law. As such, Alternative Digital brings you the Interfest show with retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Vesuje. Let's keep on the same page on Alternative Digital. As he gives you the alternatives on the transition question, rule of law, human rights and freedom, youth inclusion in governance, economic stagnation as he confirms. I'll be always here Saturday from 10 a.m. in the morning. Be there. Don't miss the live discussion on the Alternative Uganda, Digitalk TV Facebook pages and the Alternative Uganda YouTube channel. Are you craving for that special meal that will entice your taste buds and leave you with lasting thrilling memories? Look no further. Spice Island Bulenga has got your answer. Natural, fresh and delicious juice, the best meals. Do not miss our daily specials from Monday to Sunday. Pizza Wednesday, Saturday Pizza Bonanza, you buy one and take two. Come dine with us and feel the experience. We are located at Prime Shopping Center in Bulenga, Mitiana Road. For inquiries, call us on 07-04-11-1720. Spice Island, we treat your cravings. people you're welcome to the snap talk with your girl teddy tango every saturday right from six to seven Speaking of is it about family? Is it outside family? Is it society? Oh, could it be relationships? Come and visit, call me. It's my younger, I miss you, bichi, bichi. Especially in game, a better you would have seen. No, 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 just be commenting at the topic of the topic of the topic of the the alternative dig talk of the the snap talk. The Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. A very, very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome to today's edition of Hotline. My name is Roger Sturiawi, and I want to begin with a disclaimer. You are used to a common face of a uh, comrade Abdelatif, but unfortunately he had some issues, he had some emergencies he had to run to. He lost uh, one of his uh, close brothers, and so he wasn't able to make it today. So today's discussion, but I'm going to be sitting in, and I'm hosting two gentlemen who are not very new. They are familiar with us. They have been here before. And we're going to be talking about a number of issues mostly to do with today's celebration of the Tarehe Sita, 42nd at that. Um, most, <coughs> more, more, most people actually relate it to kind of the NRM. So Tarehe Sita is more like a government thing, an NRM thing. And so today we want to look at the relevance that has and want to get the opinions of people who represent, who represent the public as a whole. And two of the gentlemen are both are from different parties. One is the Secretary General of the National Economic Empowerment Dialogue, another is a deputy spokesperson of uh, the German party. Uh, good evening, ladies, lady, uh, gentlemen, sorry. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, you're welcome to the hotline. Good evening, ladies, for those who are watching 
You no longer obviously like classify yeah, people, right. but uh, for today, for the purpose of today, because at least me, I was I, sure I am a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, for the purpose yeah. of today, let us be gentlemen. Yeah, and, and so I'm going to give you uh, each one of you a uh, time to introduce yourself. Say hello to our viewers at the beginning, this time. Yeah, thank you very much, my brother, <coughs> for this opportunity. I want to greet uh, my brother there uh, from uh, that party. I understand you are no be. Uh, yes, I'm an <laughs> I am a founder member. I am a founder member. A former. It did great work to shape us to what we are. Uh, it has good mentorship as a party. That's the truth. Mm. So, but I want to also greet uh, viewers. Yeah. Um, in Uganda, would say, no, kubasa asira una <laughs> Somebody was telling me we were having a discussion, and he said uh, that if you look at everything, it could go for uh, one of the, the de deception of all times. And I told him what he said. Actually, if you acted the movie, it would be a good horror movie, a selling one. <laughs> and we laughed. So, but here we are. It is part of the. It has now become part of our history as a country. It has. Okay, you're welcome, uh, <coughs> Mr. Odaka, uh, Mr. Zikusok. Yes. You're welcome, sir. Say hello to our viewers. Uh, our viewers tonight, uh, you are most welcome to this uh, media platform, the Dig Talk. We are here to disseminate information that is meant for human consumption and for Ugandans to actually have time to comprehend on the history of this country. We are very glad that the government has had this day to celebrate. However, though, we need to enlighten more of our young generation on the history of our country, not necessarily of what is said, but what the truth is all about. Thank you so much. I, I sometimes wonder who exactly says what the truth is. Mm. Because some people have said, especially those in government have said they have been in the history and have uh, come through it and now they are telling us what exactly happened there. Mm. But a lot of others, some of whom were there with them, have different versions. So a lot of people do not know exactly which one is we are we, we're supposed to believe. And speaking of history, you as an individual, Ali Zikusok, as a citizen of Uganda, not necessarily as a representative of Jema, as a citizen of Uganda, what uh, do you have to say about a day today, the sixth day, Tarehe Sita? Um, personally, mm. I would like to tell Ugandans and more so the young generation of my age, 40 downwards and that slightly higher, that this is the forty the 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 forty second the forty yes. second time the government the current government of the Republic of Uganda yes. is celebrating their victory over the regime that was there yes but uh it is uh, uh, you know it is it is it is uh, it is something that beats my understanding when we talk about a, 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 a dirty as clean. You know, when it is dirty and then it, is, it appears clean and it is celebrated as clean. If, 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 I'm, if I'm gotten very okay. You know, when, when you want to celebrate when you want to celebrate a victory mm. and, and that victory is as a result of uh, illegality an illegality that later turns out to be legalized mm. so it must be celebrated in other words the genesis is illegal the, ge uh, the, the, the illegal genesis turns out legal after victory and we, celebrate it. and we must celebrate it 
no matter what. And uh, this is the plain truth. And uh, we have all known that this country has a history with the, with the previous governments before the current government yes. of the NRM. And uh, that history has brought the current NRM into purportedly saying that the mischiefs of those countries have led 27 people sit down with the leadership of His Excellency the President today, mm. who was then labeled as a rebel. And that is, uh, that is the history. And that, that is what history has written. Yes. And history has, re has written, Rebel Museveni does ABCD. Yes. Rebel Museveni does ABCD. And today, His Excellency the President is the chief of staff, chief of command, command in chief. the commander in chief, in chief. Yes. Of the and uh, of the of the armed forces of the what, and 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 that is a title gotten after this victory. Yes, That's this right. is a title emanating from from rebel activities. Rebel activities, giving you a platform, and becoming the commander in chief, and having the audacity to speak about the history of past regimes. In good way, in bad way, that is now another question if you asked me, mm. but still again, I would like to I would like to commend the, the rebel group. I would like to commend the rebel group then. It's, it's no longer rebel, it's now I, I would then it's legally yeah. you know when, when, when you speak then then you have You're cleared right, you, yes. you have cleared. I want to commend the rebel group then that disturbed the peace of this country that was a reason for the death of so many of Ugandans, that was the reason of destruction of so many property belonging to Ugandans, that was a result of destruction of human, our social and everything life that we had before. And uh, living for 42 years and serving this country the way they have served. You know, I have been following I have been following the general speaking, mm. giving, giving the lecture, as, as, as he was saying that this is a, a state, this is people's, the UPDF, the People's um. Defense Forces. People's Defense Forces. And, 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 and you wonder if really the write-up is up to date with the happenings of the day-to-day the day -day happenings the UPDF is, is, is an army for the commander-in-chief, is an army for the son, is an army. I, I think we Ugandans are actually secondary for, 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 for the betterment of the, the, the first family. U Ugandans take secondary benefits of their, of their forces. <laughs> yeah? Secondary benefits of their forces. So ideally... I want us to look at the preamble of our constitution. Mm. You know, the preamble of our constitution is a very beautiful preamble. When the constitution was coming into force, it gives you the recognition of our past. Eh? We, we are recognizing our past. Are we we are bringing in this law. They are telling us we are bringing in this law. And you know, when you're talking about this preamble, and I'm talking about the constitution, because the constitution is the law that gives mandate to the UPDF, that establishes the UPDF. Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It is the law that establishes the UPDF with, a mandate, with its mandate, functions, and everything founded by the Constitution mm -hmm. before you go to their acts. Mm? Acts enacted by the Parliament, governing the law, governing the behavior pattern and the actions of the UPDF. We have, in our preamble, we have... Uh, a statement if I can read them verbatim for our viewers and I give you my establishment this is the preamble of our Constitution that says recording our history with which has been characterized by by political and constitutional instability mm -hmm. political and, institutional and instability. Con constitutional instability so there there have there has been political performances before yes. and we have constitutions but there is some kind of instability within these 
political life, the political life of this country and the, the, the constitutional life of this country has been at stake with a lot of instabilities. And this is why these people sit down and think that we must come out with the modus of seeing that these instabilities politically and constitutionally stabilize. Mm. But I want, I want you to look, I want you to ask yourself and be truthful to yourself. Do we have political instability? Do we have, do we have political stability currently in the, in the 42 years of celebration? <coughs> do we have that political instability? When you see people in different spheres of political affiliations crying for government, to let the political prisoners out of prisons, to let people not be... To, uh, when, when you look at uh, the actions of the UPDF, the actions of the police, the people's police force, in times of elections, and uh, those, those are political rhyme rights, and we mm -hmm. see people in times of harsh political times when the government and uh, uh, the, the UPDF, the police, the Uganda police force uh, brutally uh, taking on Ugandans. I, I don't think I, I, I don't think I would take that as a as a stability. Let me, let me ask you, Mr. Zikusoka. Sorry to cut you short. By far and large, uh, looking at the instabilities that are still existing, of course, irrespective of the uh, of the write up, the write up, the beautiful the write up of the, of the constitution. We have been uh, flagged for having the very beautiful laws, but having absolutely no uh, implementation. Mm. But that is a, a, a fact that happens. But looking at the instabilities that are there, would you say that to a larger extent or a lesser, the UPDF has brought a bit of peace to this country, at least for this long? From in, uh, the NRA to the NRM, of course. And, 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 and you know when you need to examine when you need to examine the peace or when you need to examine performance, mm. then you look back. That's right. Then you look back. You have a fallback position mm -hmm. to understand your submission. Mm. In my preamble, I told people that we are here to let Ugandans of my age and slightly above to have a comprehension of the history of this country. Yes. We have had regimes of Oboti, we have had regimes. You know, the first regimes that are being talked about today are the regimes of Obote and Idi Amin Dada. Mm, literally. Literally, literally. Those are, yes. those, those, that is where we want to, 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 to drive the establishment of the NRA. Mm. Why the NRA? Why, why now the NRA? Okay? And did we have peace? Did we have peace? In times of Obote, one and two, did we have peace in times of Idi Amin? What happened? You know, Ugandans have tainted Idi Amin Dada with a lot of fabrications, lies, so that the current stand of we have brought you peace back, we have done ABCD, is a statement that is qualified by only utterances of the current regime. Let me, let me first ask uh, uh, <laughs> the Secretary General of, of uh, NEED. He, he does uh, build a foundation of where NRM, NRA at the time, and obviously the Furonasa and, and all that, where they began the foundation they built upon to say that they are legitimately in position to fight and defend the rights of the people of Uganda. Would you, would you say that at the time it was legitimate for the NRA to come and liberate the people of Uganda, or liberate as they call it? Uh, <clears throat> first of all, we shouldn't, uh, legitimacy should be looked at as, a, as a, an end product. <laughs> if you want to look at, uh, because then if you look at it as an end product, it will then give you, give you an opportunity to evaluate your own performance to compare with the ones you <laughs> removed. Mm. Yes. If you are, if all your activities, your processes and everything you've done is extremely similar or even worse than the former, then you have no legitimacy. <laughs> it undoes your legitimacy. So, so, so in that sense, 
you lose the legitimacy. That's right. Yes. I will tell you, uh, today, if you, just let me talk about the, in regard to that legitimacy. If you brought Idi Amin Dada, with all the negative publicity they have told us, who didn't, we who didn't see him, mm. and you put the two on a ballot paper with the current regime, me and you, uh, uh, guess where the ballot will be. <laughs> <laughs> me and you can guess where the ballot will be. And that speaks to your performance as a regime. Number two, I would want to correct that uh, today's uh, celebration is not uh, a celebration of, any go in, of government. It is a celebration of a regime. Three, I would want to, so therefore, when I am evaluating the performance of this regime in regard to the relevance of today, I begin from where they started. Mm. When they started, um, on uh, about 42 years ago, uh, they told us why they went there. And they gave us reasons, and the reasons were 10. Ten, it is those reasons that caused the death of way beyond 500,000 lives. Yes. Those reasons. Five, in addition to 500 U, uh, Ugandans dead, we, we, we lost so much, so much properties destroyed. And, and many people to death are living in exile. You know the kind of brains we have in exile. That's why when you go to some hospitals in the US here and so uh, in the region and so on, some of the reason was because of that. Mm. Therefore, if I want to evaluate the relevance of today, I must go to the basis and the reason they gave us. Because I must only evaluate you basing on the the records mm. you have, or oh, oh, basis you have, you, you have set yourselves. Yes. Because it will be unfair for me to set mine and evaluate you. I could be setting beyond. But therefore, what, whatever you set must be within your capacity. That is fair. Now, if you look at the promises for which way beyond 500 Ugandans were killed, it wasn't because Ugandans didn't have hospitals, because they had. No, no. That's, that wasn't. They didn't tell us that because there are no roads, they didn't tell us so. They didn't tell us about polio that they were, it's not true. They didn't tell us because of PDM, it was not all those. The number one was about democracy. Now, if you want to evaluate today, relevance of today, you now have to, to look at the regime in town. To what extent have they achieved in regard to their democracy. And you see, democracy has its own tenets. The very, the very one that sparked today's war was that they were cheated on in elections. Mm, which was <laughs> far from the truth. You see? Whether, whether true or not, I want to give them a benefit of doubt that maybe they were right. Maybe it was true. But you see, if it were true, of course everybody knows that it was a lie. But you see, but now, if I give the benefit of doubt that it was true, and the issue was democracy, now tell me, how have they performed in as far as delivering democracy in this country? You know that in, it is under Museveni's regime that uh, a presidential candidate has campaigned throughout Uganda in a, in a bulletproof jacket. <laughs> <laughs> it is in Museveni's government. You know that it is in Museveni's government, and in, in elections, that uh, over 100 people are sh were shot on the streets of, on account purely of, because they were supporting another candidate. Opposition. Opposition. Mm -hmm. You know that it is purely under Museveni's, in the, regime, in the, in the history of Uganda, Museveni, that if you are putting on an opposition, you remember uh, another DC's uh, escort who killed so many supporters of Dr. Kesinje mm. in Burang. <laughs> because people might think that maybe it was Chagulanje because he is this and so on and they accuse him. 
But you see, during during Kizavesije, you know how many were killed. Once you contest, it is only under Museveni's <laughs> mode of democracy that his opponent, Kizavesije in 26, was campaign was nominated. It was only a poster that was nominated. <laughs> they nominated the poster and they say the man was in Luzira. Your opponent is in Luzira. You remember during Semogere, how many, you know, Mr. Museveni is only scare under Semogere was that uh, number one, if you vote Semogere, me, I will go back to the bush. And by then, they would parade uh, scars and say, you see, if you support this, if this man this goes is through, what you're, this, you're is what, this is, the, you are going to episode two of this one. And they had, the, people had undergone the brut brutality of the war. They knew the brute of the war. So, there is nothing conceivable by a, a, a reasonable mind that has not been done under Museveni's, Museveni, Museveni's democracy. Therefore, in a comparison, you will therefore think that uh, uh, the, what, what Obote and what he claims to came to the bush was uh, acts of, 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 of Boy Scouts compared to him. Individualism. You see? It's compared to him. They were not. You could not see, even with what, it, you know it is in, in seven years old, Whatever you know what they did in the even by elections, you, you, you are going to see what is going to happen in Sereda. In Sereda. I was in Soroti yesterday. I drove there, I went to through Torum, I went to Serere. I was just yes, yesterday is when I came. I just to see. But you, you know, it looks like all barracks and police uh, this is, this is a horrifying thing. It looks like now Okony or oh, 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 ADF is making its way in Serere. <laughs> what I saw in Serere, and yet that is the kind of democracy. Yes, I'm yeah. now, point number two, you talked about security. Let me tell you, and I would want people to distinguish between when they are talking about security. There are two. It's what they call personal security and regime security. What the NRA, because I want to call it NRA, because uh, apart from having act, PDF act, and so on and so forth, this is the this army is not in PDF. We've not graduated. Do you know why? All army numbers, there is nothing like UPDF. Army mm -hmm. numbers are called Ara. national resistance. Then they give zero 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 zero. And and, and people who want to lie to themselves, you see, this is UPDF. We must come to a table where we all agree that this is our army from name. You know, you know what uh, Mr. Seven himself talked about. So, if you are talking about security, uh, you, me, and you, maybe all of us in this studio, have suffered <laughs> the wrath of person. Today, you cannot trust moving from here to say uh, the other side of Maki India under the cover of darkness with your phone. So that is personal security. I am telling you, just yesterday, you know, anywhere you live, your, whether you live a car, just yesterday, I came, I was come, when I came from Serere, parking my vehicle at that shell of, of, of Kireka, you know, you park your car, enter into, just to buy water in a select shop, coming back, they have broken into a car and they've taken things. <laughs> so, so, in regard to security of regime, Seven has done, he knows it. That's why himself moves with an entire, I don't know, because I don't know how many things, I don't know how that one is called. I don't know whether battalion, I don't know, I don't know what it is. But he moves with, the, <clears throat> there is a section of anti-tanks. You know, you know anti-tanks, eh? anti-tanks, he moves with, as if he's in Ukraine. Anti-tanks, he moves with anti-aircraft, he moves with the assault, assault team. He moves with, he moves with, he moves with, including sniffer dogs and so on. <laughs> Moving with himself. And that man who says he brought one. So why, why is he keeping himself? He's keeping himself with the, first of all, he uses a, a medica. Then he moves with this thing people call his what? His toilet. His toilet. Mm -hmm. That's not a toilet, my friend. 
that is that is that thing that thing it is only nuclear thing that can explode that to hide him that you get it it's not his toilet you do you know just moving with that have you which other president in africa have you seen moving with that thing you think all of them don't go toilets so that is security now the man that is the concept now if you're talking about security that is the concept through which you should see himself. Let me, let me ask you, Mr. Odaka, sorry a little bit. Now, you, you did uh, base your argument on a parameter of, of his comparing, compare, comparing what was there yeah. and what there is currently. Yes. And I, I want us to be fair in judgment. When you look at the, the, the state of Uganda, especially as far as security is concerned, at least between the, around 1975, to 1985, because yes. that is a whole period transition. Yes. yes. Would you would you say that the state of Uganda and in the security of the people and the peace that prevailed then is what also did happen after that? You see, I had become charitable with the, with that regime. Mm -hmm. But let me, you want me to be brutal to them? Uh, let me mm -hmm. tell you, if you look at from 1962, you get it mm. to. To 1985, oh, okay, okay, up to date. Which are the times that Uganda was peaceful? Actually, the only time Uganda was peaceful when Museveni was not an active actor in the politics of Uganda. That's 1962. To there was just uh, that uh, Buganda crisis. They were around 1966. When Museveni became of age and interested in politics. Uganda became, there was insecurity until he came to power. We are all here, people who, who, who have rubbed the shoulders with the law. If you are analyzing that, who would you convict? That the only time uh, a property has not been lost in this room is when you are out. But every time you are within here, a phone is lost, a microphone is lost. And so who do you want us to suspect? So that is the brutal reality and the episode in this country that people should evaluate. That how come it is only when you are young that this country was secure, but all the time and when you came to power that when, <laughs> but all the time when you were just active there, there was something wrong. So I want to, I, I don't want to, to, to push it to him, but I would want him to prove himself or he would tell us. Unfortunately, every time he writes a book, he writes things which are which are <laughs> alternative yes, truths. You know, we, which are we, which are contestable. He writes contestable truth. So I will tell you that uh, there has never been security or insecurity in this country. And you know, he told us he is a master of violence. Mm. He said it. Yeah, that he did. He told he told us. So why would you think that uh, that he himself is confessing? To eat, and you want to you want to to to, to doubt his capabilities. No, most of the part, the reason why I ask that question is commonly one, mm -hmm. because I have had from the generation at least that are much older than me. Yes, most of them have had this notion of look, we do not want to go back to what we know what it was like, and we have had the. Do peace. you know why? We have had the peace after that. Do you know why? They have said they have experienced <laughs> some relative <laughs> peace. They go to sleep. They yeah, do my, some sleep. My young brother, do you know what? Because if this gentleman goes out of here, again, sleep is going. So meaning that it is him who causes the lack of sleep. That is precisely what everybody is making. That's the point. That's the point. Uh, so yes. those things of security, democracy, it is just... Uh, you must study all of these things in context of Mr. Museveni's characters. You know that um, you, you, you studied him from, from when he was in uh, Dar es Salaam. When he, I interacted with Museveni's former teacher called Dan Wabudere, mm. the late. Mm. Dan Wabudere, we were at Nambul and he told me, <laughs> we asked him so many questions. Because the particular question I asked him, that, that Musei, why would all of you, because you, 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 you realize that most of the people Museveni was interacting with, a very super intelligent brain. Yes, most of them. You look at, because look at uh, putting together Dan Wabudere, Kiza Besije, Tunyefunza, those are super brains. Mm. 
uh, amanya mushega those are super those are not average brains but he managed to put them together and today all of the mbabazi all of them say the man lied to us so my question is how can this fine brain be lied to moreover in unison <laughs> and you know what 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 now they dodged my question but told me man that boy when i was teaching him at least i saw one thing in him that he wanted you would teach him you are teaching him theories of this theories of this but you would always find him with a magazine full of pictures of of knives of guns things uh, elements so that's that, that's what now there is unfortunately is dead that, that, that's now there is and, and he had been mm. he had fantasized the fear now of course then later on he actualized that through his thesis uh, quoting film. frank fonen's theory mm. of violence <laughs> so you, so you see you you know you know the man's history in regard to violence can be traced so security it is only him as long as he's there security of state will be there security of person you will suffer me and you and others have been beaten on these roads yeah. simply because of these things uh, mr zikusoka i wanted to give a bit of also an analysis in relation to what he has said an analysis of how this one has progressed for this long how they have performed in comparison with what the situation was like before they came and, and maybe you draw a conclusion on they have probably done this or they have failed at this they have worsened this they have uh, kind of reduced on something that was bad back in the day yeah thank you thank you and thank you our viewers i also would wish to in a different tone say that uh, if if the smart brains of the century admit to be in your own basket think for them or speak to him as he he extract some intelligence from you and mm. from this one and from this one he is now trying to create an intelligence that is much better than all of you because he has gathered from you, from has gathered, of you yes he has gathered from you he has gathered from this one he has gathered from this one so it's time for him to make an opinion and this opinion is going to be based on the so much more brains that have been paramountly applauded in this country like he's saying so here president Museveni has 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 secured has secured that his intelligence has beaten all those intelligences because he has managed and it is it is it this is an intelligent brain sitting here and it is wondering how this man mm. has unanimously led these people into a basket later to realize that he has been it, it is it is he's been deceitful to us huh? mm. but i also want to but i also want to say that that question of seven being be, moving with deception and being deceitful to the, to the members is another political is another political arm that is being presented by these people to keep the regime into existence yes to keep this regime into existence because now if they tell us that president Museveni deceived us and the, the message will come out the mugisha muntu will come out this one will come out it is creating a, it is creating another a, another number of population that is going to follow that one mm. this is another number of population that is going to follow this one and it has been seen in this country when when uh, when message came out and people said no civilian is going to do it let us go with this and, and uh, this other this army man who will encounter another army mm -hmm. and an, another army man and this and Besiji was telling us that look here people i know this man i am his doctor i have been with him it is only me that is going to try to try and finish this by then you see afterwards bugisha muntu comes out and says no in, in, yes in an, uh, enough is enough in another event you see also the, the the prime minister then the, the patrick amamambaba also comes in and says no i want a b c d and 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 some small time they all silenced so i think uh, security of regime pistol seveni is very 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 intelligent and he has known how to handle such elements 
either through intimidation either through dialogue either through threats you know because uh, Ugandans Ugandans in the past have been threatened with death and instability and this is what we are talking about political instability kill as many as you can brutalize as many as you can create fear create fear and that fear has been created and this is why those old people are all, are all speaking the same language we cannot go back to the old days we cannot go back to the old days the general the general if i'm not mistaken of their ranks who has given the speech today is it imbadi the 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 chief of uh, uh, is it imbadi who was speaking he said we shall uh, I, I, I don't quote him verbatim, but I quote him as, as I comprehended mm. his speech. He's trying to tell people that there is no time to go back to the bush. We shall not have time for guns anymore. Now, creation of fear and presenting what created fear in the eyes of Ugandans at that time is persistently creating subsequent fear out of out of the bush of the original yes fear. out of the original but second the subsequent fear that this is what brought the other the other instability so ugandans be much more clear that things can go back then but i want you to i want you to still understand but that uh, the years the years of strength of youths where this fear was created is now the, the 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 war lasted for five years. Mm. The war lasted for five years. Yes. These people were still energetic. These people were still youth. They were strong, yeah. Yeah, they were still strong. But now, after those five years, how many other years have gone? Almost thirty something. Thirty something years. This is the thirty seventh celebrations of mm. the NRM government. Yes. Meaning, thirty seven mm. years plus five years. It is 40 years. Don't you think the energy that those people had at that time is still the energy that is here? <laughs> what shall we do to make sure that these people who have, our, who have the energy that we had as we were overthrowing those governments must not do? We should also create a notion that tell these people that please don't play with the gun. Because when you play with a gun, we shall come for you. We don't. We are the masters. Yes, we are the masters of this. We are the masters of this game. We know how to find you if you have a gun. And this is why you see a lot of our money, a lot of our taxpayers' money is taken up by security organs. Classified expenditures. Classified expenditures of the military. Classified expenditures of police. Classified expenditures of uh, UPDF. These classified expenditures are none other than intelligence issues. Trust me, the time they raided this office, if you had a gun, <laughs> if you had a gun in here, would not you would sure not be in function again at, at this time. Mm. We wouldn't be seeing Big Talk again. If you would believe in that. Yes, if you would believe in that. And if they had actually, if they wanted, after that small intimidation that you got that time, if they actually want to make you finished, they will just come and plant some two, three guns here. Mm. Uh, and yes, because they, 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 are the, they, they are the sovereign, they, are the, they have the might, they have the means, they can do whatever they have, they can do because they're the master of violence, they can master, they can m manufacture violence, so they can manufacture your, your dirty even when you're clean. So in, in doing that, that is when the master of violence comes in and uh, takes the lead, becomes victorious and makes sure that we must now establish stability that is not going to harm us we have disorganized the country we've been successful at disorganizing this country but now we are the victorious people believe me or not there might be or there would be people who would actually wish to do what we have done to the regime how do we make sure that we have stabilized everything criminalize having guns because this is, you know what a gun can do. Mm. Make it criminal. And whoever has it has an intention and must, must have a reason, a rationale behind holding one. So, 
the UPDF. I want to commend the YouTube, the UPDF after their illegal business. business and actually in situating themselves into legality. And the country now has accepted that the rebels are no, are, are no longer rebels, but they are our heroes. Okay? The rebels are no longer rebels and they are now our they are now our heroes. They have begun they have begun getting medals. I have seen the yeah, yeah, yeah. They gave them the yes, uh, order of Katonga star medals. Uh, yes. They're the biggest I think it's the top most uh, medal uh, in, uh, yes. Uh, now I have seen them being given those medals. I have seen now now these are our heroes. Regardless of the history. Of, regardless of the data history, these are now our heroes. This is, these are the people we must cherish. This is the notion that we must take on as the young blood. This is, this is the, this is the, this is the write-ups that we must teach. Huh? It is the history. It is the history that we have now. Mm. So it must not look dirty. Let us polish our history to look a little bit clean. To look a, to look a little bit uh, calling. To look a little bit attractive. To, to, to look a little bit beautiful for those that are going to come, for these ones that we are giving birth to. So, Museveni has created history. Museveni has created history in, 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 in this. But you have also told me to give you where they have, they, they have actually done good and where they have not done good. Yes. I think the Tarehe Sita would be a platform for UPDF as they celebrate to reflect on not abusing the, 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 the past regimes, but focusing on how they can better this country after, after they, are, they have become legal. We have nothing to do. But how do we better the security of this country? How do we better the security of our citizens? Mm. Now I go back to the mandate of the UPDF. Huh? You know, the mandate of the UPDF that comes from this constitution, the constitution establishes the people's, the Uganda People's mm -hmm. Defense Force with functions and mandates. Yes. I think in the Tarehe Sita, before you grant the medals, before you grant what, before you grant what, remembering and causing pain for those that lost people in those rebel wars, sit down and establish on you and establish the, the the strength of your mandate have you strongly implement put into implication in, into practice mm. eh? into practicability the mandate that has been given to you by the constitution are your functions still on now because you see now the updf i want to commend them on the on their on their role and function of protecting the sovereign of uganda Mm, the sovereignty of the state. Yes, I want to commend them on protection of the sovereign of the state. And that is regime protection, like he said. <laughs> that is regime so protection. Even that you're giving it over to the regime. Yes, it well. is regime protection. Because it is going to be it is going to be written in the history of the NRM. This is our country. The NRM has been there between this time and this time, but no country outside like it was with Amin. Mm. Amin had an army which had the mandate to protect the sovereign, but then the Museveni and the people went to Tanzania, yeah. gathered a number of people, and those people from Tanzania, those other outside states, came and attacked the sovereignty of Uganda. And it, Amin has gone. Yeah, yeah, Museveni yeah. has managed, Museveni and the UPDF have managed to make sure that the sovereignty of this country remains intact and protected. And this is why they as the sovereign in our preamble. That one they have done because nobody is given the mandate. You know, the, 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 the Lord's Resistance Army. The Lord's Resistance Army. I don't want to go in who, into the nitty grits of who created the Lord's Resistance Army or what. But if it was a creation, if it was a creature and a creation of the regime, to make sure that the intimidation persists for another term, but not in the, in, in the bush, but with, from within the communities. Okay? But they will tell you, we have defeated the Lord's Resistance Army. Mm. That is where they will get the credit. Because they will say that. We have defeated the Lord's Resistance Army. We have defeated the, uh, the, uh, the, 
ADF. Mm. Eh? We are fighting the ADF. They, they have posted to them, at least not necessarily uh -huh. defeated. Yes. They have maybe not defeated, but they have actually uh, weakened mm. their means of, of attacking the sovereignty of this country. No matter these small bombings or what, or what that come and claim lives. This is where we shall have them as challenges. And we are telling them, you have not done, you, but you have not done the mandate and the functions that are given to you to your best. And, uh, and you need to further better your security what? Your security mechanisms. Because Ugandans are still losing their lives and you are promising us that you have brought peace. So there is something to actually celebrate from uh, the UPDF? For, no, 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 from their rebel actions and from their rebel <laughs> activities. It is very much... Yeah, the same person who said it is now legal, so we can Yeah, from the... I said yeah. from. You know, you know okay, this is... Okay. English is very difficult. <laughs> if English is, diff is very difficult, but you have to comprehend. I said from their rebel ac actions that has granted them the legality. They need to celebrate their lives. They need to celebrate their lives. They did not die. Mm. They need to celebrate what they see today. Mm. They need to do A, B, C, D. But they need the, 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 the most important issue today from the, from the, the, aging, the aging army officers. Mostly those ones who were there in the rebel, in the, in the rebel times. Mm. In the rebel times. They are creating what we call the ideology and this ideology if not implanted in the new generations that have embraced the uniform it is not going to work out for them mm -hmm. so this tare is is a is a awakening up mechanisms of the new entrants in the army that look here this is what we stand for. Yes, that look here, you people in our uniform. Look here, you people who are holding the guns for our country. Look here, you people who have been given, who, who have been given ranks, but you have not gone through what we have gone through before. This is the idea. We did A, B, C, D. We were here and we did this. We were here and we did this. So as these people are being taught and being given the history of why they are there and they are being told that this is the tw this is the four this is the forty second time we are celebrating this they are trying to tell you you will have your time to celebrate this for as long as you keep this ideology intact and you have us protected mr Odaka, what is there to celebrate by in in the updf on a day like this uh <coughs> <clears throat> you see, I had uh, earlier on uh, stated, if we are to celebrate an army called UPDF, we must celebrate it on the basis of comparison, at least for now. Um, I am one of those, or oh, my party, or our party, is one of those parties that keep asking those that have the, the power to try to put UPDF at least above reproach. Uh, so that we, we are all, because normally, UPDF is the ultimate guarantor of our collective statehood and sovereignty. Right. It would be, I said it would be. It is deceptive. It is uh, being, it is conmanship to begin telling us how UPDF is strong. And by the way, what General Mbadi was saying today oh. is nothing less than mere uh, illusion. It is an illusion to state that. You see, we have had armies in this region and in Africa that everybody knew these are armies that have, that, that are likely to outlive the regime and therefore nothing 
can dismantle that state in as, as long as that army is available. If you look at uh, before 1991, the Somali army was the one in all these regions under General Farai did. Everywhere trying to guarantee peace, even in Uganda here, by the way, even in this country, Uganda, in Kenya, in all over Africa. The problem general, the, the, those generals did were to fuse the army, first of all, fuse the army with every institution. So much that everybody, so, that my, so much that every ill that that government did or was doing, people were directly associating it with the army. And therefore, the means fighting what would be the neutrality of that army. That was the trend that happened in Somalia. If you want to have a comparison with the way it is run here, today the army is in agriculture, today they are even proposing, the other day you had the Nabanja proposing that the army will go and teach in schools, today the army is in parliament, the army is virtually in every aspect of our lives. You can't go to get passport unless there is an army. That is the trend the Somalis took. We all know where they are today. That's right. Even by 1991, the capacity of Somali army then was not comparable with ours today. <laughs> In West Africa, we had an army called uh, the army or in Libya. You know that the Afri in Africa, only South Africa and Egypt were beating <laughs> the, the Libyan army in yeah. terms of capacity. Only South Africa and Egypt. We all know where, where Libya is today. So what General Mbadi and General Museveni are saying and so on, and his other son, you know his son, one of his eldest son, those are illusions. The only way to guarantee and to make sure that we do not go back to where they came from is acting reasonably, acting with the with, with the reason really, and, and being conscious that we don't go back to what caused them to do that. Oh. That was the only way. Otherwise, there is no strength of army that can stand an explosion or an implosion of people who are oppressed. It is not there in the world. That army is, not, is yet to be built. Even superpowers do not do that. That's why you see in the Americans and superpowers, when something happens, they rush to apologize to their citizen, or they go to try to correct things because they know there is no army that can stand in front of a, an angry, oppressed citizenry who think they now have nothing to lose. So, look at our UPDF today. We are talking about, you see, funny, for any mind, when you look at our, our, our UPDF as created in the Constitution, operationalize under the UPDF Act and what they are doing. Let me tell you what Ms. Seven today is doing. The biggest worry of Ms. Seven is a possible or, or any likely alliance between the citizens and the army. That is biggest. That is one of the things that makes, makes him lose sleep because the day that thing happens, maybe history will begin reading differently. <laughs> I am telling we shall read different history. Because let me tell you, these armies are our brothers. They go to same hospitals. They take their children to same schools. In other words, they feel the same pain with us. Mm. So the only way that will make them, they are, it will make their anger not be, because for them when they are angry, they, they, they have their style of reacting. Mm -hmm. So the day they, 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 they have alliance in terms of our anger, I am telling you, uh, they will act differently. And you see, 
So, so when you see, for example, let me tell you the army, the way the army miss. Look at the UPDF for uh, general court marshal and marshals. Mm. Look at the way what they are doing now. Uh, these uh, these civilian being uh, prosecuted okay, in the court marshal. You know that we have rulings from of both high court and also constitutional court in regard have, to that. Yeah, Not have, one. They are about several of them. We have several, yes. We have you several, have several yes. of them. But Mr. Mr. Odak, I'm going to request you to just hold it a bit at that. Uh, we're going to go in for a very short commercial break. When we come back, I want you to finish that point, but also I want us to a bit examine the, the, the well, supposed success if you find any or find reason to uh, uh, apportion any, depending on the one, one of the 10 points program that is NRM and the NRA obviously established. And, and, and the different sectors that uh, this country is a uh, kind of led and, and see how far do we need to go or how far we have come what is it that we need to be doing and what is the role of the people themselves because it seems like a lot of people have kind of sort of sat back and expected things to work out by magic and so oh. that is what I want us to look at in the second hour we're going to go in for a short commercial break we'll be right back Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. Fellow citizens, following the sequence of events, Uganda seems to be at political crossroads. I'm not a servant of anybody. <laughs> Madam, I know the law. <laughs> As such, Alternative Digital brings you the Interfest show with retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Vesuje. Let's keep on the same page on Alternative Digital. As he gives you the alternatives on the transition question, rule of law, human rights and freedom, youth inclusion in governance, economic stagnation, as he confirms. I'll be always here Saturday from 10 a.m in the morning. Be there. Don't miss the live discussion on the Alternative Uganda, Digitalk TV Facebook pages, and the Alternative Uganda YouTube channel. Hello, beautiful people. You're welcome to the Snap Talk with your girl, Teddy Tenjo, every Saturday, right from 6 to 7. <laughs> Is it about family? Is it outside family? Is it society? Oh, could it be relationships? Come and visit, call me. It's my younger, I miss you, which is which especially in game. I better you would have seen it. No, no, my quagga leader, my season, yeah, but a quagga as a whole Just be commenting a topic in a janja got the toggle, got to your cot yoga quanku. The alternative dig talk will share a nganzi, the snap talk. <laughs> Are you craving for that special meal that will entice your taste buds and leave you with lasting thrilling memories? Look no further. Spice Island Bolenga has got your answer. Natural, fresh and delicious juice, the best meals. Don't miss our daily specials from Monday to Sunday. This is Wednesday. Saturday Pizza Bonanza, you buy one and take two. Come dine with us and feel the experience. We are located at Prime Shopping Center in Bulenga, Mitiana Road. For inquiries, call us on 07-04-11-1720. Spice Island, we treat your cravings. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk.
Uh, welcome back from that short commercial break, ladies and gentlemen. My name again is Roger Studiawe, and uh, you're watching uh, the Hotline Show. We happen every Monday from 7 to 9 p.m. And uh, we come here with different people, bring to you different people who have different expertise in different issues that affect this nation. And you will find to, uh, the, the, the objective is to find solutions to particular issues. We will come and talk about problems, but we will not live without what is it that we need to do, how do we better situations that bring us here to talk about it. So today I have two gentlemen who come from two different parties and we're talking about Tare Hesita, but not just about that, uh, but the whole structure of and the institution that brought about Tare Hesita, the NRAM, the NRA as it was, and, and the government, the current government that's standing right now. Uh, Mr. Odaka was still giving us some bit of an analysis. I, I was waiting for a part where he says, the, I will commend the UPDF for doing this and that. I was waiting for the achievement. I don't know. Do you have any? Uh, finish. I was doing How would they conduct themselves? Why I would not commend them as of now? Mm. Look at uh, what is happening in the general court martial. If you read, uh, I think, uh, section 190, both 1, 2, up to 3 of the UPDF Act, mm. it would tell you the boundaries and what the UPDF Act is actually supposed to be. And it would also tell you that what, whatever is happening, uh, those, these political prisoners is all a misuse of the army, mm. uh, which we would all be, uh, be respecting, so that we own it as ours, so that it, it outlives a regime. Mm. You see, uh, particularly, I think, I think uh, 190, and I wanted to, to whatever this, to justify my own, 193, it says that, for example, if, first of all, the UPDF, the court marshal is actually a tribunal established to bring discipline within the, 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 the army. Now, to show you to the extent, uh, that section I have cited states that if anybody, <laughs> and all of us are, <laughs> if anybody, whether sold, okay, you said anybody charged under the court martial, after 90 days, if his case or her case has not been disposed, he is, uh, the, 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 the commanding officer will write to the president or, or any authority appointed by the president, and thereafter, that person is released unconditionally. <laughs> you get it? Upon the reference from uh, the, the president. I, I, that, that is ex that's only how the, I, am, I, I have quoted the, the, the section the way it is. Mm. Now, remember, now the people, the bar of those now being charged under General Cat Marshall are civilians who do not have commanding officer. <laughs> you get it? Mm. They have no authority under whom they fall. They don't. <laughs> but the other one says, 90 days now. These ones have now spent their two years. Two, under the, the UPDF Act, there is no visa. <laughs> Where there is nobody who is supposed to be remanded by the general court marshal beyond 90. Days. Even <laughs> if it's an officer. <laughs> no, it is not there. But these ones have spent two years. Of course, that's why as need, we have petitioned the court. High court. First of all, on ground of because now this this touches human rights. Mm, it is a human <laughs> for your hearing and so on and so forth, <laughs> right to bail and so on. So we have petitioned. We want the court, despite the earlier rulings which these guys do not follow. It is exactly what I was going to ask. We have <laughs> Des, of despite despite the problem. other. So we have gone to court. Part of our sorry, first of all, it is a human rights issue, but also we are telling court that the court siwama. They, they violated also the other one. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you saying this time around? So we, ha we have done that. So, so but you see, what the, 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 the purpose of this is to try to put friction between the army and the civilian. So that the, the sole beneficiary is him, the regime leader. He will send the army, give them orders to beat civilian on the streets. And you know what? the civilian will say that army and there would not be in fact to 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 to, to remove the understanding that would be there between the army and the civilian 
So I want to appeal, like I have appealed to the, the, these managers, that you see, we have never uh, seen a regime going in this country and then our army transcends that regime. Every regime has come with its army and gone with its army. Mm. Now, we, we, we've been struggling. Some of us are struggling. All what we are saying with a lot of pain is to uh, probably have uh, appeal to some reason, reasonable people to know that maybe this one should do. Because that is the biggest test of any army, especially armies that have, uh, uh, that were, uh, like Obote used to call them, bandits, and how to live transformed into assemblies of national pride. Now, but, but you see, the test is how to live in, because mortality is a, is a very democratic. Mortality, you know, is a, is a, in some seven years, is a motor like, is not even. <laughs> mm. it's, it's, it's a preserve of nature. It's, it's a nothing. preserve of nature, a dictate of nature. <laughs> nature will dictate its what? Its course, yeah. it's, Nature will bring its verdict on the table one day. <laughs> and, and you know what? You don't escape nature's verdict. So if nature dictates or presents its verdict, and this army is still, uh, will, will, will the army escort the, the, the man into the, that side, you know, that address? Mm -hmm, of course not. If they will not go to that address with him. <laughs> of course not. They will be here for, to salute those who are still living. But if this is how they want to do, tell me how we shall salute. Of course the next address will be Tamui for this country. Mm -hmm. and that is the worry. That is where we should be debating and not assurances or illusionary assurance of our leaders like the CDF. Mm -hmm. Lastly, I will tell you, and, 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 and you, you, there's a quest, the question you asked at, uh, when we were closing. <laughs> it is... Uh, this country... Uh, has had its own history, a unique history. And for me, and that's what one time, I was in this same studio and I asked uh, police, when I went there, I, I met three, some three policemen who told me how the question touched them. <laughs> because I asked that you were a police officer. Mm. Because all old regimes, the regimes, including Amin's regime, these Tunyafuzas, these whatevers were policemen. When the regime changed, they changed. You get it? Mm. I asked you, a police officer, with what you're doing, with what you're doing to the citizens, do you think this regime will go? And you also like Ochola. You find a place in another. Ochola, Ochola moved from two regimes or three regimes. Today is an IGP. You can also find a place in the new regime. Can you? With what you're doing. And I found, and the guy said, man, He's mentioned something when I looked around all my friends and I thought uh, I am a misfit in this community. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you see, those are personal. Because there will be a time when all of us go back. And you know, you have done what you've done as a policeman, as so and so, as a corrupt uh, thief, as a minister, as this one who went to Buda and knocked a, a, a poor kid and easy, it were all over everywhere. Then you go back and your children also tell you, you have killed the, 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 the father of somebody on the streets, you've shot dead, and you, 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 you go back and your child says, Papa, welcome, welcome back. back. And you also say, yes, I've come back. And that deep in you, you know you have just made some, some other kids orphan. You know what happened in, in Kawanda. Mm. Both parents went to, 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 to pick, but then this one, this other parent found audacity to kill another, border, border, another parent there, and he made the children. You tell me how you want to live with that kind of, and, and this is and now, then, you know, and it is terrible, it is not believable now to try to separate that kind of mentality from the institution. Do you know what? All of us move in this, in this, in the, on these roads. You move there, you will see a red number plate. The guy sees you, he has no right of way, he is coming. You, you, you are still there looking for where to, 
to leave him his way, he's pointing. Me, they are pointed with a pistol three times like this. You are still looking for where to park somebody. There is one who stepped on my, you, you look at one of my mirrors, broken. He was escorting one, then we found mango. I was still looking for, you know, there is no way you can go into us. Stepped on my mirror because he's <laughs> standing on a pickup. <laughs> hmm? That is the impunity. And he's putting on your uniform bought by your own. And he's, he's holding a gun. So that is the kind of image. Now, tell me if that is the kind of image. If you have a child, you be on TV with that child and ask that child, you know our children these days are not like us those days. <laughs> Interview that child and find out the kind of perception they have on our police or anybody in uniform. Let me, let me ask uh, uh, Zip Soka. We have, uh, as, as listening to some of uh, the speeches President Museven was giving, I think it was a 40th celebration of Stare Sita. And he was talking about the history of DP and how there was so much sectarianism, how actually their failure was because there was more leaning on uh, religion and that, that kind of stuff. And, and, and point three of their 10 point program says consolidation of national unity and an elimination of all forms of sectarianism. I want you to rate them on the point of sectarianism and tell us how far we are, forward or backward. Uh, thank you so much. You know, unless I don't understand the word sectarianism, <laughs> or I need to be educated about sectarianism, if you might help me, you find the meaning. <laughs> you find me the meaning of sectarianism, then I will begin from what you have read, because I don't want to appear as if I'm speaking my own, <laughs> as if as if I'm, I'm 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 digging my own what, my own beans, so that I can sow tomorrow. But if you find me the word sectarianism... It, it, sectarianism is a strong support for the religious or political group you belong to and often involves conflict with other groups. Another one says excessive attachment to a particular sect or party. Thank you so much. You know, when, when, when the president begins to say, NRM is a war. What is that from the explanation? <laughs> from, from the explanation of that, uh, because now that is not your explanation. No, it's not mine. The people, the English, oh, those people that speak English, mm. I have, have comprehended the word and they have given you what it means. Mm. But now the president comes in and tells you, NRM Yesalao. Over Kalulu, NRM Yesalao. Over, 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 Muna Tambula Mutia, NRM Yesarao. Over near Natufuga, NRM Yesarao. Over by election, NRM Yesarao. Over t now, sectarianism, I don't want to give, I don't want to give and give any marks on sectarianism because I, I think this regime is the worst. I think this regime is the worst. I don't want to go tribal, I don't want to go religious, mm -hmm. I don't want to go what, but uh, I am a Muslim by religion. Mm. I am a Muslim by religion, I am a Muganda by clan, I'm a Ugandan above all. I think all what we, we, all, all, all what we need to do is looking at an individual as a Ugandan, regardless of where they come from, regardless of what they profess, regardless of what they affiliate to politically. Mm. This is what that 10-point program number three is saying, like mm. you're saying. Mm. Literally, that is what it is. Literally, that is what it is. And literally, it is telling us that we are not going to look at you as a Mnyangkole. We shall not look at you as a Msoga. Mm. We shall not look at you as a Muslim. We shall not look at you as a, this one or this or this. But what is going to be our priority is your nationality. If you fall into a category of those people that are identified as Ugandans, those that live within the jurisdiction and the vicinity and the, the boundaries of this country shall have equal rights in participation of whatever issue that might be of national interest of national interest and and, and uh, 
This is why sometimes I hear the president very bitter when he was when he's speaking about Amin or the Muslim community and is saying that they call he, us wakafiri. He never has yeah, he never has kind words for Amin. Yeah, he never has kind <laughs> words for Amin. He says wakafiri, he says this, they wanted to do this and this <laughs> and this. But portraying portraying that because when 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 Museven is gone, I think there are so many other people that are not going to have kind words for him. There are so many. They are just waiting for him to go. And there are many who have kind word for him now. There are so many because so, when you yes, there are so many okay. because because when you when, when you when when you listen to the Tareh Sita, when you listen to the Tareh Sita deliberations mm. and uh, speeches, outreaches, they are all kind words for him. They are all polishing words for him. They are all sweet words for him. Now, look, look, look at the justice of this country trying to give Museveni a medal. He's a fountain of honor. The fountain of honor. Okay? Now, is, isn't that a kind word? When, when Idamin was here, he was CBE, CBO, whatever, conqueror of the British Empire. <laughs> and <laughs> conqueror of the British Empire. And everywhere he was standing, he would say, CBE. <laughs> and those other issues... And above all, conqueror of the British Empire. Has Museveni ever said that once no. in his life I'm about not, Idi Amin? Not, and, you think, and you think if Museveni is gone, everyone is going to say, our man, our man has gone? Huh? I'm going to, to, to be alternating between the two of you. Each one of you is going to give... Um... So for, sectari for sectarianism, mm. sectarianism indeed... You know, I was, I was on a TV show when one, one, one of the panelists was saying that, don't talk about sectarianism. Look at the hierarchies in the army and look at those people who have been given big offices. All of them, he began, he began singing your names to the Agumanawi. And by, and by the way, uh, <laughs> I, I, found, I found a tweet today which is absolutely Yes, unfair. he was formed, he was... Uh, people, uh, people are saying we, we, we kind of have an upper hand at life because we look a particular way. Uh, it is not fair. It, yes. But now, <laughs> now for you... Yes, because now, now, now for you, you are, you are a victim. You are a victim of those names. You know, you know when, was, when, when, the, the, when there was these uh, riots of Kayunga, the Kayunga riots, mm. when people were gathering, other people, when they were giving them some sticks and say, Gambo Mfaliso, and when you say Mfaliso, you would go. <laughs> eh? so, such kind of issues, such kind of things. When you look at where they come from, why would a certain group of people harass another group of people because they can't speak their language right? But this is godly. This is godly. You are in Uganda. I am in Mnyankole. You are in Uganda. I am in Soga. It's not a decision. It is not a decision I've made. It is not my own making. So my language is my priority. Don't force me to speak your language. This is what we call sectarianism. But if still again, people must must you know in 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 Uganda today there is. Do you have any Gambanog? If you don't, if, if, if do you have any gamba? No, God have mercy. Yes, if you don't have, then if you are if, if you have fallen victim of anything and you don't have gamba, no, go it does that speak to sectarianism? We'll give you good so, so much prayers. <laughs> we have a point for says defending and consolidating national independence. <laughs> okay, but you see, if you want to talk about defending and consolidating. Uh, national independence. You go back to the owners of this country. <clears throat> Ownership of this country belongs to... First of all, it is prudent to remember how this country came to what it is. It is am an amalgamation of 14 that became 15 nations it must be something that uh, the regime in town is struggling to make the ugandan today not to know about it now so so if you want to defend there is is it the political independence 
Is it the economic independence? Is it the social independence? Because you must put those in, in perspective. And, and, Let me tell you. In, in case, if, if you've talked from that perspective, I want you to take both with the five. Mm. Five is building an independent, integrated, and self-sustaining national it, economy. It's called I, I building have a an independent, integrated, sustaining... <laughs> These guys I are have big a feeling English. you're going to be... Now, let me tell you. Yes, me. because <laughs> when you look at the political independence, Defending and consolidating our political independence, de defending it from who or from who, against what? Against for the external external aggression. Mm. Now, let me tell you, all our intelligence and security systems in this country are, are, are managed by foreigners. That's the truth. That's what we do not want to talk about ourselves. That's not what we want to talk about ourselves. Because it portrays us as, uh, as regimes, or uh, it portrays the regime in town as uh, simply a puppet of a certain external forces. Mm. We are talked, we, they, they always talk about Pan-Africanism, Pan-Africanism and Pan-Africanism. Pan-Africanism, okay, something I do not want to uh, ascribe myself to you're not because of the kind of the vulgarized version of the of of of, of, of the regime in the town's mode of pan-africanism that's why by the way uh, pan-africanism as it was for the do this dubious marahu but because of the vulgarity vulgarizing it by the people in town i distance myself from it but you see if you're a pan-africanist would you associate yourself with, uh, say, uh, American, Americans in order to go and balkanize uh, or divide South Sudan? Is, is Pan-Africanism, do so, so, uh, pan ascribe to the idea of cutting Africa into pieces? You know that the regime in town today um, somehow associated itself to the cutting of South Sudan. You know, you know how many regimes we have overthrown around the regions. <laughs> and, and, and one day somebody prided and said, we have our middle name is overthrowing governments around <laughs> a, a, a general in this country. So when you talk about uh, independence and what and so on, I say against two. Today, I mean, if I mean woke up today. And I'm talking about economic independence. Mm. And he started from Plot 1 Nakasero. So he, so he begins pointing. I left uh, something called Sheraton Hotel. Who owns it today? Americans, not Ugandans. Mm. I left another hotel called uh, Nile Mansion. Who owns it today? Indian. I left another hotel called uh, Grand Imperial. Who owns it today? It is Indians. Then he said, I left another land for a PTC which I built. Who owns it today? Today it is an Indian hotel or something or, uh, or left, mall. I left a Uganda commercial bank. I left a bank for Uganda. <laughs> what is it? It is, it is limbo. It is dead. I left. Then he counts all those because those I are symbols of economic, economic independence. I left even... Uh, what they call a train, where is it? Yeah. And I mean, will you count? I left for you an airline, what is it today? Today you have Tukutuku Air Airlines. <laughs> we have you get Uganda it? Airlines on that <laughs> <laughs> My brother, I move, I travel, I also move. <laughs> so, so, you cannot <laughs> minimize us to that level. <laughs> no, I am not. No, 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 I am not, no. but I am comparing it. Do you know, at the time of departure of Mamin, do you know he left? He left uh, about 50 something yes. air buses. Mm. So I am not minimizing, I'm not saying you don't have, <laughs> but I'm saying you have took, took one. But the other one left air buses in the 1970s. You get it? Yeah. I am talking in comparison. In, in the regime of no much technology. In a regime of a buffoon, in a, of a, in a regime, and a buffoon in the man's language. In the, the re mm. regime whose dead body you cannot even touch using a long stick. The man will say, all of these are left. So who owns them today? And they are Indians and they are foreigners. So which independence have you defended? 
Economically. Whose independence have you? Let me yeah. tell you. In our constitution, do you know that in our constitution, the constitution recognizes cultural leaders. You, we are great. Yes. All of your lawyers, yes. isn't it? Yes. Recognizes. But do you know that among us, the types of citizenship recognized in the constitution, you cannot be a citizen mm. because of your because of your descent. You don't. Exactly. You don't. And, 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 and when your national ID expires, I your national ID. Did you know that your citizen? You are not a citizen <laughs> because your father and mother and grandfather were and, citizens. And your that. citizenship here is equal to an Indian who was traveling from Bom is called what? Bombay, Bombay yeah. to Congo, but then he got what, labor from Australia? here and gave birth, <laughs> was produced from here. That's the labor at which he brought our citizenship. Yeah. And nobody is talking about it. So which independence are you, are you talking about? What independence? That you, the Kusoka, you are not a Ugandan because your grandfather is Obamuisa Mususwa, Obamuisa what? It is not there. But, but you see, because of political expediency, you are at the same time uh, sponsoring some people you are calling cultural leaders. Does it, does, does it come to any reasonable mind? <laughs> this one is surprised. <laughs> Can you imagine? Did you know that? That you, you are at the level with an Indian here. These ones are children of literacy. You see? So, where there is literature, they will learn. You see, you see these, <laughs> these, they, they, that is how bad, you see, that is how bad it is. That is how decept deceptive it is. Now, you look at your, you know, building an independent, <laughs> self-sustaining, you know, self-sustaining, uh, and you're talking about that, that, that you see there are basic things we don't have in a country. There, that there, 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 there's always been this discussion of comparison of the GDP. Mm. How the economy was doing back in the day around the 1980s and now today we are doing. And you that know. has always been the point where you, you know. the current government has said, look, we have moved you this far. Back then you were this much. This is how far we have come. Let, me tell, you. Let me tell you, my brother. And, and actually, just one more. In, in that same uh, uh, speech he was giving, I think the 40th, uh, Tere Sita, he said that back then we had a problem of shortage. Nowadays we have a problem of surplus. Mm. So I want you, you to see, look at the, the independence of the economy and, and that analysis of the situation. You know, that we have. Uh, in 1998, 98, Clinton said, we asked him about the economy. You know the answer he gave, mm. the shortest answer. He said he was even moving. The moment that question came, he simply said, Economy is stupid and walked away. <laughs> Little, <very clear. laughs> so I will tell you that now, anybody who gives you a picture of GDP, of what, of figures, of what, and so on, you know, one of the things that made me say, let me maybe, after studying economics and what, let me go and study something. <laughs> Theoretical. <laughs> because sometimes I got sick. The numbers do not add up. Because the figures, let me tell you, you sometimes want to compare to see what is in the statistics, what is in the figures with what is in the soccer, the mm. pocket, and things don't correlate. Correlation, angazi, zero to. Now, <laughs> I will tell you, my brother, that if you, anybody, you see, by 1990s, mm. you know, there are categorization of, 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 of countries. They are developed countries. Yes. You get it? Mm -hmm. And uh, by elimination, I want to say Uganda is not a developed country. Of course not. They are developing countries. Mm -hmm. By elimination, Uganda is not a developing country. They are le le less developed countries. Uga by elimination, Uganda is not a less developed country. They are indebted countries. By elimination, Uganda is not a, an indebted country. They are uh, highly indebted country. Uganda is not even that. They are what they call poor indebted country. You get it? <laughs> and Uganda, by any nation, Uganda is not a poor indebted country. Mm. So I will tell you, mm -hmm. as somebody who also has a background in economics, Uganda is uncategorized countries in all that. Because there was a time, there was a time when we were 
highly indebted poor country and we are forgiven. You remember? I, I, I want to cross. No, 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 no. I want to cross. I, I am asking you because I do not want to say. Anything I want to cross you, but I'm going to ask you one more question. Uh, no, no, no. Let me. Let, let's agree day, on this. Let's agree on this. Let's agree on this. And it is not a laughing matter. From the indebtedness of our. You country. remember? You yeah. remember that there was a time we were highly indebted, indebted poor country, and we were forgiven. Mm -hmm. So if you are forgiven from a highly indebted poor country, and today you are debt to you know debt to GDP ratio, ratio mm -hmm. is 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 is, is, is clocking the red line. So do you want to tell me economically you are classified? You are not. You are not. With, with this indebtedness, or Dakar, and, and it is so how do you how do you build a, 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 an independent? <laughs> This is on a very good Stup note. Yeah, you, come from, stupid. you come from <laughs> you come from a party that uh, as as spearheads the economic empowerment. Hmm? I want you to give us a projection with what th this is. You are an economist. You know the GDP ratio to whatever that is. All those figures that yes. fail to add up. Yes, I I gave you. That how, Uganda how, is there. Uh, uh, how, how, how do you think we can uh, get back on track? At least, what do you think we should be doing? Okay. Let's you give know, an advice one to the uh, government. Uh, you know, to the people I, I have told you, first of all, I hope we agree, basing on the evidence I have tendered on, on table, mm. uh, that on Uganda the is unclassified. I, I have my questions on that one, but let's agree no, for now. Okay. <laughs> next, time, next time, somebody will watch <laughs> and, and we we'll debate. Not no, we are unclassified. You, you were one time and you were forgiven. Is that right? Mm -hmm. You were a highly indebted poor country. You remember they were called I, I, H something something P. Yeah, yeah. All that bits die hard. Yes, <laughs> and you were forgiven and you went back. But yeah. you see, on that, let well, me tell well, you. Well, I believe it is now a play, a, play, a, play game, a play game for looking for forgiveness. Let us get so <laughs> that many of that is the very reason that they can forgive us again. That is the very reason why you are unclassified. <laughs> Now, but let's. But you see, if you are in a country, and in these times, when everybody who wants leadership mm. does not tell the people that I am going to take you to this height, I'm not take you to this height. I'm going to bring for you this new thing. But the best-selling message of every aspiring presidential or national leader says, "I am going to return this." I am going to return this. I am going to return this. You know, you know what that means? That means the current regime in town, dispensation, has taken people in negative development. And the people want to struggle to get from negative to level zero before they can begin the count. The positive, yes. That's what it means. So I will tell you that's why economy is stupid. <laughs> so, so, so all of those figures... Those guys are giving you, hey, we were at, at 40. Let me tell you, I have said this before, mm. that by 1986, when these guys, they, they, they entered town, mm. and they came to town and they saw the, these lights and, and the, you know, the excitement when you're from the village the first time and see, you know, you know, you know the theory of a village cock? Mm. You bring, I one time went to Tororo. The mommy gave me a big cock like this. I brought, we arrived at midnight. It was dark in the car. We got the cock and we threw it in lights like this. The cock started crowing. The cock thought it was now daytime. <laughs> that, is, that is the theory of a village cock of people who arrived in this town. So they grabbed everything. And, but that is not important. What is important mm. is that they found that, um, for example, coffee revenue was... Uh, about 700 euros something mm. today it has grown time was sure. seven today 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 as per the as per the report of 2022 october of coffee but you see by then the growth i'm comparing for you the growth mm. by then we knew tycoons who grew who, who became rich out of coffee Mm -hmm. Where that brother of mine comes from, the youth say, mm -hmm. People were building, if you go to those Kamuri side of Vutfading and so on, people built good houses out of coffee. You go to Mbali, every child, you here in Buganda, but today time is seven. Mm -hmm. To show you that all those figures are, are economists, stupid. 
Tell me time was seven. Who, which tycoon will you point at and you say, ah, ah, you see that Lillian, you see that who? That is a tycoon out of coffee. The economy is stupid, my brother. Let me, let me, let me get to, to Zikusoka. I'm going to read just one more. And then I'm going to look at one that has been in uh, most contestation. The seven is elimination of corruption and misuse of power. I, I want you to, you to, to humbly give an analysis of that. And then I can read um, some, I have some, a few comments here. And then because time is, is, is fast when it's running out. Uh, thank you so much. When we, you know, the draft is beautiful. But when you have, when you have people that, uh, that go to university to study public administration, they they study to manage public mm. but i think they don't study to manage themselves <laughs> they manage others they, they are taught to manage others mm. maybe because those that teach them to manage others think they can manage themselves but you can find a person who is a, a public administrator who cannot self-regulate, self-administer. Mm, that's true. And uh, this one, if you talk about elimination of corruption, mm. the regime is, uh, is 70, is, uh, the regime is 33, seven, uh, 37 years old. Yes, yes, the regime. The regime is 37 years old. Tadehe is 42, this is 42 years. Mm. I don't know now what does that mean. I think the Tare Sita is, is from, I think, 1981, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, with, with, no, with no beautiful words, and for lack of a better word to use, the regime is failing since time in memorial to date mm -hmm. to eliminate corruption. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think this regime is ready to eliminate corruption. Because corruption is making everything move on smoothly with it. What do we do? The president, I uh, and I think, and I think, and I think, you know, when the Indians were were expelled from Uganda, they left property. Yeah. They left property. They left it. And uh, in a bid to return that property, government enacted the ex. Appropriate proper, property Indian law, property, yes, like act. Mm. But that act was not to give back the property to the Indians, mm. and this is where you find a lot of business here is being owned by Indian by the Indians. But oh, in in in, in my own understanding as a Ugandan as an individual, <laughs> I think people wanted to use it as a curtain to have the Indians come back so that they can use them to get the property that was disseminated. I am a legal person and I know why I say that. That is number one. Isn't that corruption? Very smart corruption. It is. Smart one. Yes. Very smart corruption. And uh, so many IGGs have been on. But when this Betty Namisango, Olive Kamiya was given the position of IGG. Bambi, she wanted to, to get to that elimination of corruption. Mm, okay? To, to clean the house. Yeah, she wanted to get there, to elimination of corruption. And this is what she said in one of her speeches. She said, we shall have to use... Where did you get this? Huh? Eh? Mm. Where the, uh, the, there is a terminology that that, that, that she used, eh? lifestyle the audit. Lifestyle, lifestyle audit. audit. Mm. Our president said, "A a a a a, Madam Olive, you are crossing the line. You are crossing the line. These people are corrupt, but they are building us good buildings here. <laughs> when you look into their life eh, style, when you want to use that style, lifestyle audit, eh, you will find that the." Skyscrapers that are being built in Kampala will be now being will be built in India, will be built in Nairobi, in Nairobi yeah. will be built somewhere else. So oh, oh leave them, let them do what? Let them build here. 
if you are actually an icon in fighting corruption, self audit, self style audit would be the best. Because by that, nobody is going to be out of, 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 of audit. <coughs> But mm. let me give you information. By the way, that is not the first time SM7 is glorifying corruption. 1987, despite this, 1987, SM7 said corruption is part of development. Huh? And he qualified, in 1987, and he qualified this by saying that it is because these corrupt people, when he steals money, he will build this. And they will build a house, will yeah. build, establish something. They will be beneficiaries. And the people, they will be beneficiaries. <laughs> <laughs> but I've had, I have had, I have had the president himself say that he does not tolerate a vice in the system. He has okay? said that. He has said in fact, that. even today he talked about it. He said, school. I will not tolerate Let a vice in the Ahmed. system. Let me Before. ask you, Ahmed. Yes. Let me ask you a question. Is it the first time you're hearing him self-contradict? <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me read a bit of, uh, some, some, of the, some of the comments. Uh, uh, there's, uh, uh, someone said, uh, Rogers, I'm sure you know that Mr. Museveni has always called and or described Damien as an idiot. Uh, swine, it is. But this swine, as Mr. Museveni has called him, left UCB, which the genius Museveni would say later, uh -huh. that the swine idiot didn't leave us with the national debt as compared to the genius and only Museveni has genetically developed. Mm -hmm. The swine idiot did not have corrupt officials mm -hmm. as compared to the genius Museven had has, has bred. Mm. Mr. Museven's government is the only government so far, even in East Africa, with the most educated MPs, ministers, it is who are rather behaving as idiots. Okay, if your father is deemed as an idiot but can buy food to, to feed his family, and on the other hand, there is self claiming genius who is selling inherited family property, I think I would rather have an idiotic father with a caring heart than Virginia's <laughs> without any sense of direction. Yeah. I yeah. feel sad that apparently... <laughs> you know, before you, the, even, the be, <laughs> before you even conclude that message, yeah. it, it, it gives you... It actually, it actually touches your heart to understand that a country without heritage is nothing. Mm, that's right. That is what this gentleman is trying to tell you. Is trying to tell you that you, a country or a home without heritage. You know, you know I, I, I want to go back to why the Muslims are fighting. Why the Muslims are at loggerhead with administrations. Mm. Eh? Mm. It, it is because one administration is trying to finish the, the, the Islamic okay. heritage. And the other one is saying this heritage should stay. Without our heritage we are no, we are no more. So if Uganda, with all its heritage from the previous regimes, are, are being no more in the current regime, when you look at those, you, you know, ginger, ginger in, 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 in the times of Obote, ginger in the times of Idi Amin, was this city that was a, a Ugandan city. Ugandans, we are proud to have an in a city that is industrious. Ginger. Mm. What is ginger today? How does ginger look like today? Do a maize roasting city and chapati. The, the, the textile industries, the coffee industries, the authorities that we had. And it's a city now. Yes, the bankers that we have, we had. And, and, and this heritage we are trying to look at. What, is, what do you have to compare as the current regime? Which heritage are they giving us compared to the heritage that was there and it has been lost in the current regime? Uh, now, no, Mr. Uh, do, we, do we have good administration? I am trying to look at the point of misuse of, the, <laughs> of power. Of power. Misuse of power. Mm. If, 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 you have, if you don't use your power to the benefit of the people that have trusted you with leadership, failure we are running out of time i want you to to make a concluding remark but in your conclusion i, I want us to you, uh, you to give us a bit of a direction to say that to get out of this pit as it seems both of you have described to get out of this mess to get out of this problem that uh, this government has created and this uh under the nri nrm 
this is what we need to do. We need merit. If you have to, if you have to give people what to do, you have to give it on merit. Merit, merit, and merit. We have to give it to people that seem patriotic, and I don't think people are patriotic to that extent where we have to get the best out of individuals. Patriotism is preached and it is lacking. Mm. Corruption is fought, but it is rampant. And growing. And growing. Misuse of power is fought, but it is the trend the business. of the businesses today. Faithfulness is not is not an element enshrined in the people in public offices. Technocrats, everyone wants to do whatever they want to do within their own understanding. Mm. Well, I think merit, patriotism, and... And direction, genuinely. We need direction. <laughs> Uganda. <laughs> Conclude. Conclude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, though, however, though, mm. with, with, with all the challenges that this, this, this government has, with all the challenges that this government has, mm. people are still living, however poor they are, but they are still, they are still living with hopes of one time a seeing tomorrow. a better Uganda. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, Odaka. Your concluding remarks and uh, way forward, what should we do? Way forward, uh, <clears throat> uh, the only viable way forward in regard to if, you, if you're telling us uh, an exit uh, uh, strategy in regard to the problems that we find ourselves as a country today, there is only one, mm. one grand one. Uh, because after that one, that's when we can reorganize. And that is, uh, have you ever used the train? Yeah, I have. Once. It must have been out of the country, or it must have been in Bidi's mm -hmm. world. <laughs> um, it was me when I was, man. I was young, we used it at least. Uh, I was studying in Ijinja, and I was coming from Tororo. And they would make us this hand. If your hand, there were only three, either you had a, a, an ID of a school, you would board free, or you were in school uniform, or your hand was not reaching your opposite ear. <laughs> the only way to make the train, the, the, the whatever of the train is the head. So you remove the head, you either, it is the head that determines motion or not. So in this country, we know there is a leader of uh, a group that is uh, whose actions are omissions and commissions are bedeviling us around here. So I will tell you, there was a time we used to think, to appeal that, oh, you see, change this, change this, change this. That's from where the, 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 this chorus of government to Yambe came from. Until we realize that the government here no te yamba. Te genda tu yamba. Te yamba. Te yajja ku yamba. Te yamba. So, then what do we do? Kujiji hawo. For me, I, I will tell people the hard one. Mm. Because that, that seems to be the hardest. Mm. Like they thought that but, the but past see, regimes were not helpful. Yes, but you see, it, is, step, the, it mm, is the hard table. route. But... It is the only viable route. 1980, Mr. Museveni, you know fighting a regime. For me, I respect them. Fighting a regime that you know is armed and you're going to fight it using Has all guns, the resources. You know, it, it takes the courage of an insane person to take it up. Hmm. But you see, because you're putting your life in danger, those guys did that. You know what? Nobody is courageous enough to die. But you see, once it is the only route, it is the only one. To, do you know why Palestinians get stones and are stoning Israels with the tanks? And you, you throw a small 
stone, size of a sand, and you are shot with guns. And the other one does not, the one who is behind does not go back. He also advances. Not because they are yes, courageous. Mm. Because when you are defending, you are what your entitlement. Mm. You have no limit to what you can do. This regime has now crossed from abstract things to our <laughs> human, what would you call our human part of us? It is our livelihood and our entitlement. That's why you see very many people now, the issue, you, you can be in the, on this land for a long time. The day somebody comes and claims it is the day you realize you have, you, you, you have no entitlement. Mm. So when it reaches where it has reached, the only viable way is send the regime packing, you begin on a new, a, a new fresh. For me, that's my viable way forward. Hard, but the only one. Okay. Thank you so much. That is Odaka Suman and uh, Ahmed Ali Zikusoka. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for making the time for being here to talk to us about these particular issues. I think it's important for sometimes people feel like they need to do some things, but sometimes it will take an encouragement for another person to feel like, look, this is as bad as it is and it is going to get the even worse. Need an, the regime yeah. does yeah. need another seven <laughs> to let so, people understand exactly. that there is need for change. Exactly. So, uh, gentlemen, I hope you have learned a thing or two today. If somebody said, yes, I am so, yeah. I, sorry. Yeah. Somebody said that uh, the, the condition today, uh, the only thing lacking in today's condition that Uganda is, is M7. The rest are there. We, we need M7. No, we don't need M7. M7. Uh, that's what <laughs> you, you are, I know you're a lawyer that, and you're an Englishman. <laughs> you know that, what that, I is, that is all we have, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> he did make a good point on, on merit. His is kind of uh, so much for, for us who are weak-hearted. Mm -hmm. So it might kind of be a long shot. But he made a simple point as to do merit, that everything we do as an individual, it doesn't take just the government. Yes. It takes me and you mm. to make the commitment to do things on merit. And so things. you fear my part. Because mm. best, if the, fails, if the merit fails, if the merit fails, then we shall look on his side. Do you, know, story. I mean, do you still think <laughs> there is? <laughs> that is what we have, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Roger Studiago. Thank you so much for being with us today. We will see you next Monday. Have a good night. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk.